click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about the non-ferrous alloys. Now the name itself explains itself. That means that all the alloys which are present but do not have any content of ferrous in it are all my non-ferrous alloys. Yes, there are many metals which combine together and form alloys but do not have the metal iron in them. Let us discuss a few of them in this session. The first and the most important is brass. Brass is an alloy which is made up of copper and zinc. Now the composition of copper and zinc can be varied. That means copper can be 60% to 90% whereas zinc can be from 10% to 40%. Depending on what color we want, the hardness of it and how it will be used based on the utility of it, brass is manufactured and over the proportions of the two different metals are flexible. When I say flexible, they should be in the range of 60 to 90 and 10 to 40 of copper and zinc respectively. Now let us discuss the properties of brass. The properties of brass are always in alignment with the properties of alloy. We make it because we want these properties to be in alignment of properties of an ideal alloy. Now what are the properties of an ideal alloy? The first one is it should be good for resistance against corrosion. That means the resistance of corrosion should be extremely well. It should not get corroded either by oxygen which is present in the atmosphere or by water. And again over here brass is not being corroded either by oxygen nor by water. That means it has a good resistance to corrosion. The second is it has a good color. Now because of this color this can also be used in making the jewelry. That means a cheaper version of gold jewelry can be made by brass because of the rich gold color that it possesses. And brass also has a low melting point than copper and zinc. After studying the properties let us go to the uses because of these properties the uses of the brass has become high. Brass has become much more useful than copper. Let us see all the different uses of brass. Now because of the toughness of the brass, it can be used in making different kinds of hardware. That means different kinds of nails, screws, plumbing materials and instruments can be made up of brass. All the plumbing materials and instruments can be made up because water can flow through it easily and yet it won't get corroded. So again plumbing materials, screws, all different kinds of hardwares can be made through it. Also as we have already discussed, the color of it is quite rich and it was quite near to gold and that is the reason why it can be used for making a cheaper version of jewelry. The third thing in which it can be used is for making musical instruments. Many musical instruments are made of this material, this alloy brass. Now the second and the most important is bronze. Bronze is again an alloy of copper but this time it is with tin. That means copper and tin come together and form bronze. Bronze does not have the flexibility of the proportions of the two different metals. It has a very specific proportion that is copper has to be 88% and tin has to be 12%. 88% of copper mixes with 12% of tin and forms an alloy which is brass. 88% of copper mixes with 12% of tin and forms and alloy bronze. Now this bronze is again extremely hard, extremely tough. Let us just look at the properties of it. The first property is again the toughness of it. It is quite tough, it is quite hard. Second and the most important property, it is resistance to corrosion. If we are making an alloy, the first and very, very important need to make an alloy is that it, it should not corrode eventually with years. And that is the reason why all my alloys should be extremely importantly very resistive to corrosion. So again bronze is again having a good resistance to corrosion. The third is it is ductile, fourth is it is machinable and can also be casted. Now with these properties let us study the different uses of bronze. Now the different uses of bronze are the first one it is used to make different kinds of sculptures. Now for architecture and for making different kinds of sculptures, coins or medals, bronze is used at a large scale. The second is it is also being used for making many musical instruments. Agreed brass is used for making musical instruments but this bronze is also being used for making musical instruments. The third and the most important alloy which is a non-ferrous alloy is duralium. Duralium is then alloy is the material which is used for transportation. It is used for in vehicles. It is used also in aeroplanes. Aeroplanes are made up of duralium. Now why so? First thing, duralium is an alloy of aluminium. It contains of 95% of aluminium, 4% of copper. It contains 95% of aluminium, 4% of copper, 0.5% of magnesium and 0.5% of manganese. All these elements combine together at the exact proportion to form the alloy duralium. 
Duralium is an extremely lightweight yet extremely tough alloy and because of this, this is used for the transportation purposes. Other than these, there are also a few other alloys which are being made and which do not contain iron in it. The first one is the time and solder and the second one is the woods metal. These are also the alloys being made from different elements and different metals but they do not have iron in it. For example, my tiny solder is made up of tin and lead. They both come in a specific composition mixed together and form a very good alloy. Again, it will not have any traces of iron in it. Again, both of these alloys are easily fusible. They have low melting points and they can be used at a variety of places. That means both of these alloys, though they do not have iron in it, they are rough, they are strong and they have a very high utility. So by all in this session we studied about various non-ferrous alloys or the alloys which did not contain iron in it. We studied the properties, the composition as well as the uses of it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.